Hi everyone and welcome back. We're reading Bright Storm by Vashti Hardy and we're on chapter 6, the advert. The Bright Storm twins hurried back to the slumps, climbed the tower, crossed the roof and sneaked back through the window to their tiny attic room. Parthena flew up to the exposed roof beams. A loud growl came from Arthur's stomach. Come on, the Begginses will be snoring away still. Let's raid the kitchen. I'm starting to feel hollow and poor Parthena looks half starved. Parthena gave a sharp screech. Shh, Parthena, you'll have to be quiet here. We can't risk them finding you. In the larder, the only food left on the work surface was a lump of hard cheese, a crust of stale bread and half a boiled egg. Great, if it wasn't bad enough scrabbling around in their leftovers, there has to be an egg, Arthur said. Maudy patted his arm. Well, we don't want your tongue swelling like a ship's balloon, so you can't talk. She paused. On second thoughts... He pushed her shoulder jokingly. I'll have the cheese. It should be fine if I cut off the mould. He opened the tap, then searched the cupboards for a clean cup while waiting for the pouring water to become less rusty brown. A spider scurried into the corner as Arthur took out a cracked cup. He couldn't help but imagine himself, Maudie and Dad, back home in the drawing room with honey tea, buttery crumpets and sweet berry jam. Arthur picked up the copy of Luntown Chronicle discarded on the side. He read the headlines. Pelt of vicious third continent wolf makes a record amount at auction. Blarthington drops out of bid for South Polaris after skyship fire. Labour urgently needed in southern pitch mines due to unprecedented demand. He tucked it under his arm, then they climbed the creaking stairs to their attic room. Arthur threw the newspaper onto his bed and pressed his shoulder to the wall to undo his jacket fastenings. He wriggled free. What if Dad survived, Maud? Arthur, we've spoken about this. We don't even have a sovereign to feed ourselves properly, let alone go looking for him. Parthena flew down from the roof and landed on the Luntown Chronicle. She cocked her head and screeched at Arthur. Parthena, you must be quiet. Maudie took the crust from her pocket and gave half to Arthur with the old cheese. They nibbled in silence, feeding bits of bread to Parthena. Arthur stroked her pure white feathers. Her beady eyes were so sharp and knowing. If only you could talk, he said. You promised to come back, Maudie said sadly. Arthur sat beside her. He would have tried anything to get back to us. He wanted so much to put two arms around her and hug her, the way Dad used to envelop them both like a huge bear. I just feel so useless without him, she said. Like, I knew who I was, but now... Dad told us Mum was the best engineer in Luntown. Do you remember? Maudie nodded. Arthur smiled. You'll be a great engineer too. I mean, who makes an iron arm at 11 years old? Maudie arched an eyebrow, her mood lifting. I was still 10, actually, and I'll make you a more powerful arm one day, with fingers that move with a twitch of your shoulder, so you don't have to even manipulate them into place with your other hand, and it'll bend at the elbow when you shrug. Dad said... Quick as a gust of wind, her face saddened again. It's as though every trace of who we are has been wiped out, Artie. If I didn't have you, I would probably become invisible. Arthur took the length of red ribbon from the floor. Remember what you started telling me almost as soon as you could put a sentence together? She looked at him. You said it didn't matter that I had one arm. Together we could do anything. We're bright storms. Dad had to fight to be an explorer, the first ever in our family. He travelled all the way to the volcanic isles, through the worst storm the North had ever seen. But no matter how hopeless it became, he said there was a bright light he held inside, his determination to never give up. Against all odds he made it, and discovered new islands and an amazing rare moth. So we're Bright Storms, the name he chose for himself and for us. Arthur held out the ribbon. You're Maudy Bright Storm, and one day you'll be proud to say it again. Parthena screeched and hopped up and down. And you, Parthena, the last three Bright Storms against the world. Parthena scuffed at the paper with her talons. Arthur looked at the print at Parthena's feet. He picked up the newspaper and a bolt of excitement rushed through him. A smile spread across his lips. What is it? He read aloud. Individuals wanted for treacherous journey to South Polaris. 
small wages, certain danger, shared reward and recognition if successful. Evaluations Monday apply to Miss H. Culpepper, 4 Archangel Street. He looked across, eyes wide. It's our chance, that's what. Maudie frowned. Artie, this is daft. We're barely 12. She won't take us seriously. I read about her in the Luntown Chronicle, the youngest explorer to captain a skyship to the second continent. Not at 12. But we'd just be part of the crew, with your engineering skills and my... Well, I'm not bad in the kitchen now, and every ship needs a cook's help. Maudie still looked doubtful. Come on, we at least have to try, he said. But Monday is tomorrow. Then we'd better think up a good excuse for the morning. And that's the end of chapter six. Thanks very much for listening. See you next time.